Okay, so as I mentioned, the uh, subarachnoid space contains this fluid called cerebral spinal fluid. So let's just go through some of the characteristics of cerebral spinal fluid. This is um, kind of interesting just because um, cerebral spinal fluid is always being created and it's always being recycled, but it's made mostly of just uh, water. It has a little bit of salt, a little bit of chlorides, a little bit of sugar, glucose. It has some protein in it. Uh, it has a specific weight similar to water because it's mostly water. Its pH is slightly basic of 7.35 and uh, it's should be clear, colorless, and odorless. So it just looks like water with a little bit of other stuff in it, and that's really what it is. Um, its function is very simple. It's just gonna provide mechanical protection for your brain and spinal cord. So those ventricles, the choroid plexuses of your um, brain are gonna be making cerebral spinal fluid. It's gonna be flowing throughout those ventricles and um, the different tubes through your brain into your spinal cord. Uh, remember it flows down the central canal and then it also flows all around your spinal cord in that subarachnoid space and it provides this mechanical protection. Okay, let's look a little bit at the um, spinal cord anatomy. So uh, the spinal cord, it says, begins as a continuation of our medulla oblongata. Remember I told you in the last video, it's really just the same thing. So the brain is uh, gonna have the spinal cord exit out of that brain stem, and uh, then it terminates, it says, uh, at the second lumbar vertebrae right in here. It has 31 branches um, that I mentioned, and it also has cervical and lumbar enlargements. Um, the end of the spinal cord tapers off at L2 right down here, and it is called the conus medullaris. So where the uh, spinal cord pinches off is known as this conus medullaris. And uh, that gives rise to a bunch of branches that continue down through the lumbar vertebrae and into the sacrum called the cata equina. This literally means horse's tail. So uh, this phylum terminale are all of the motors branching off. So the uh, pia mater is gonna branch off and uh, uh, fuse with the peripheral nervous system. And this cauda equina are all of these branches coming off the end of the spinal cord. So here on this diagram, you can kind of see it better. Here is the spinal cord coming down. You can see it pinches off of that conus medullaris. Then the uh, phylum terminale are all those extensions of the pia mater. It's gonna help stabilize the spinal cord. And then all of these branches coming off of the conus medullaris is called the cauda equina, or horse's tail. And they are going to consist of the dorsal and ventral roots of the lowest spinal nerves that are part of the peripheral nervous system. We're gonna talk about these in a different handout, so uh, stay tuned for that. Now, um, each area of the spinal cord is known as a spinal segment. That's the area of the spinal cord where its spinal nerves arise. So if we go up here, there's like a, a segment here, spinal segment at T10, where we have this segment of vertebrae and the branches of the spinal nerves coming off. We call that a spinal segment. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about spinal cord function. The spinal cord has two primary functions. All right, the first function is something that we're familiar with. It's the highways. We always think of the um, spinal cord as being like uh, highways for information to move 
up and down from our brain to our body and then back from our body to our brain. So that is definitely a function of the spinal cord. These highways to uh, move nerve impulses from one place to another. Now there's a second function of the spinal cord which is involving the gray matter. Remember in chapter 12 we talked about how the gray matter is a processing center. It's kind of an integration center, it's a processing center. A lot of people think of it as just being part of the brain but it's part of the spinal cord as well. Your spinal cord is a decision-making organ along with the brain. And so um, if you look at this we've got um, both gray and white ma uh, matter making up the spinal cord. So this is a cross-section of the spinal cord and this um, kind of butterfly shaped structure in the center is the gray matter. So that's going to be the processing center and the decision-making part of the spinal cord. And then wrapping around that all on the outer surface of the spinal cord is the white matter. Now remember white matter has myelin and so uh, it's an insulated set of neurons and these are where the highways are. So those highways of, of uh, travel for the, the um, nerve impulses are going to move through the white matter. This butterfly with gray matter is going to be a processing center. So it says the gray matter is shaped kind of like a letter H or a butterfly. It contains neuron cell bodies that are unmyelinated. And uh, if you look, it's kind of got, you know, like a butterfly, it's got four wings. The um, front wings are the anterior or ventral gray horns. And then the rear are the dorsal or posterior gray horns. Those are just the butterfly's wings. Um, and then it says there is uh, a structure that connects the two sides of our spinal cord called the gray commissure. And that's going to be a set of gray matter connecting the two halves of our spinal cord. That central canal that you learned in lab where we carry uh, cerebral spinal fluid is going to be right in the very center uh, of the um, great commissure and remember it's connected to that fourth ventricle and it's moving cerebral spinal fluid down through the center of our spinal cord. There's also subarachnoid space in the meninges that go around the spinal cord where cerebral spinal fluid flows as, as, as well. Okay, so that kind of takes care of our introduction, trying to um, kind of understand the anatomy and the, uh, the makeup of our spinal cord. Uh, next, we're going to talk about um, our two functions. So I've got a handout that's going to talk about the highways, the white matter, and how we move information from one place to another. And then we're going to have a set of, high, uh, a set of handouts that are going to talk about the... Um, different processing uh, qualities of the um, spinal cord and how we have reflexes that are controlled by the spinal cord itself.